We just talked about Colorado's head coach. Well, the person that Darrell relieved was Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker moved on over to Michigan State. He was fantastic last year. This year, not so much. After his season, I think it was 10 and 1, 11 and 1, he gets a nice, tasty 10 year, was it $95 million mm-hmm. extension? And then look at the Michigan State Spartans now. He's in year three of his recruiting. Usually this is the year where you really start paying attention to see how the progress happens, especially after what happened last year with you know, thinking that Michigan State was really just going to take a step forward and not only be a 10-11 team win, they might battle for the Big Ten. Well, that is obviously not the case this year as they are dreadful. They're not battling for the top of the Big Ten. They're battling to see who's on the bottom of the Big Ten. They are a basement Big Ten team this year. Now, with that being said, Twitter has done a lot of roasting of of Mel Tucker (laughs) after the uh, after the losses of Michigan State. So we won't go too deep into that portions, but he has a huge contract salary. We just saw what happened to Paul Chris shows that with huge buyouts, because that's a pretty big buyout, almost $20 million that no coach is safe. However, guys like Mel Tucker, Jimbo Fisher, their buyouts are $95 million right now, Steve. Obviously that would might come down because guys like Jimbo Fisher or Mel Tucker will be able to find another job. And usually those buyouts are in relation to the other contracts that they, uh, they, they, they kind of like uh, balance out. So 95 million is probably not 95 million, at least in the few, in, in the long run. However, how much of a leash are you going to give Mel Tucker what the Michigan state Spartans, you saw him succeed last year, but this year when it's truly his team, the recruits are his now are not succeeding whatsoever. You have to think this is what the future is going to look like for Michigan state. If Mel Tucker's still in charge. Right. You know, and the thing to factor in here too, is that Mel Tucker is a bit of a mercenary. He left Colorado pretty much in a lurch. Yep. To take the job at Michigan state. When all the rumors about him going to LSU started to fire up, he got help because Adam Schefter came out and said, well, you know, there's at least two NFL teams that have reached out to Mel Tucker to see if he'd be interested in coaching. When that happened and Michigan State was on the roll, as boosters and athletic departments are prone to do, they overreact and say, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. we're going to give you, uh, let me see, uh, five, six, seven. Not nine point five million dollars for five, ten years, and what's he going to say? He goes, and then even then he almost didn't take. It. He's like, yeah, but my assistants, you know, they're so loyal and they they're good with the kids. He got all of his assistants big raises, so Michigan State seriously has some serious scratch invested into a guy that I'm not even sure that they know that he would stick around of his own volition if another opportunity came around. So with the Michigan state has enough talent to be far more competitive than they are right now. Does it come down to coaching? Does it come down to game planning? You know, is this now the emperor has no clothes as opposed to everything kind of falling into place. And and they had some breaks last year, but still, you know, you, you have that kind of the season. It's not all luck. I mean, you have to earn that. You have to have the players to do it. But it'll be really fascinating to see how this plays out. I'm sure they could negotiate a reasonable buyout if they wanted to move on from him. Because, again, similar to Wisconsin, Michigan State sees the handwriting on the wall, too. And they're like, okay, in this all new all new Big Ten or Big 20 or whatever they're going to be calling themselves in two or three years. Big 131, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) How are we going to compete? You know, I I mean, he certainly has the type of personality that engages the press and engages the media, so that's good. You know, you can only, you know, there's only like one Casey Stengel who can just, just be Casey Stengel. And it doesn't really matter the mistakes he makes on the field because he's Casey Stengel and he's so interesting to talk to. I, I don't know that Mel Tucker is that interesting to talk to. So I, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Totally shock me if he gets fired in season. Right. But yeah. come, come bowl time, I'm not going to be surprised if Mel Tucker's name is coming up at some of the schools that we're going to start hearing about you know, you know, in November that are going to have openings or they announce that coach is not coming back or they're not going to pick up the contract. 
So maybe it won't kill Michigan State too much, but. To me, this just seems like if he's going to go somewhere else, he's going to go to the NFL because if this is what his team looks like after three years, that to me, that's a recruiting flaw. So what team is going to want to take Mel Turner if you take a 10-11 win Michigan State and then the next year you you are not where you should be whatsoever? Right. Mel Turner is known for a defensive-minded coach. We've seen it throughout his entire career. If you look at his coaching resume, he is defensive-minded. Defensive backs coach, defensive coordinator in the pros and in college. Michigan State is 101st in the nation in total defense. That just can't happen if, as a Big Ten school, especially if you have a head coach that you're supposed to rely on for the next decade. And then you talk about, well, is it coaching or is it the players? Now, I think you can't put everything on coaching, especially if your head coach is a defensive-minded coach. You obviously you have to have top notch offensive guy, coaches as well, so there could mm-hmm. be a blame pointed at the offense coordinator and stuff like that because they're ninety second in total offense, ninety second and one hundred one in total offense and defense respectively. As a Big Ten team, as a team who was a eleven win team last year, how is that regression so bad? It's it's recruiting, it's absolutely recruiting. It's the guys that. The Mel Tucker regime went and got, and those guys aren't panning out. So not only is it coaching, it's the talent that they brought in. It's more than just the people who are calling the plays. It's the people who are bringing in the players to call those plays too. And Mel Tucker is the person who runs that entire show right now. So the finger has to be pointed at him. Regardless of the progress he had last year, the issue relies on Mel Tucker right now because of what is occurring with the Spartans. They're not losing close ones. Like they won close ones last year. Mm -hmm. They're getting, they're getting embarrassed out there. We saw what happened against Washington, Washington or Washington state. Was it Washington? Um, And then we saw what happened last week against Minnesota. So uh, I'm, I'm not by any means saying that they can't turn this around because this is a pretty high prestige school. Mm -hmm. But right now there's a lot of issues to worry about. We have this new thing called the transfer portal that if uh, recruits or prospects aren't happy with where they're at, they can leave. And the ones that are being successful are usually the ones who go out the door first because they want to be able to compete and go to the SEC or go to the top Big Ten schools. A team like Michigan State, who normally gets those four-star recruits, top three-star recruits, maybe a few five-stars here and there, they'll be the first to go if they're a team that doesn't qualify for a bowl, which doesn't look like they're going to do this year. No, yeah. A lot of issues, a lot of questions about Mel Tucker and the Michigan State Spartans, a team that was an 11-win team last year. A lot to worry about. A lot to worry about. This is what Monday Moanings is all about. Look at that. Starting right off the bat with a Monday Moaning, and we're moaning about Michigan State. Look at that, right <laughs> off the bat. Talking about that. I mean, he's 15-10 and 10 as a coach for Michigan State right now. But if you look at he's 0-2 so far this year in the Big Ten. And that's the biggest deal. You know, he was seven and two in the Big Ten last year with his eleven and two record, won the Peach Bowl. Unless he wins the next seven games in the Big Ten, he's not he's not living up to where he was in the conference. And I don't see him winning no. the next seven games. I think he's still got to play Michigan and Ohio State. So good luck. 